Hi, my name is Randy Jones and this is my wife Nancy and it's a delight to come to you today. I believe the Lord has given us a message that is timely. Uh, today is a significant weekend in the life of the church and on Sundays we dedicate that time to the Lord. Hope you'll take the next 28 minutes and spend it with us as we endeavor to pray and uh, seek the Lord in his word and minister to one another. Uh, Nancy, greet our friends and we want to say welcome to the bridge. And uh, we are excited about what the Lord has done, is doing, and is about to do. Some doors have swung open and we've been able to reach out to millions of people. And we have an opportunity again to do that today. And we're asking for your prayers as we speak to entire nations in the world. And uh, God is opening those doors and we're just uh, kind of blown away at what the Lord has done. If you'd like to be a part, we invite you to pray. If there's some way that you could help us uh, with some resources to be able to buy some of the equipment that's needed, uh, that would be awesome. And Nancy's going to share with you a scripture and greet you. How are we doing, Nancy? We're cold. <laughs> Where are we? That's why we're not outside. We are inside our fifth wheel today. With the heater on. With the heater on. Yeah, actually, it's our little fireplace. It's an electric fireplace. Keeps us <laughs> nice and toasty. Got soup That's going. True. But, um, yeah, we're in Kansas, and it's a little bit cold. And it's supposed to get down to, like, 21 tonight or something mm -hmm. ungodly like that. And then... Um, the, we're, they were even going to say snow for Monday. Snow. Snow. And we've never lived where there was snow except for in Springfield. And that didn't happen very often. But here it is yeah, October and, and one to three inches on Monday. And we're having to learn a whole new learning curve about <laughs> living in a fifth wheel with cold. Yeah. So pray for us. Pray for, for our sure. pipes. We had to go buy a heater to put down below by our pipes uh -huh. so they don't freeze. We had to get stuff to wrap the water thing with. And they even told us here at the park, starting tonight, we have to, to well, actually starting a couple nights ago, we actually had to um, turn off the water that from the outside that comes into the trailer because they don't want it to freeze. Right. We can turn it on in the daytime when it warms up <clears throat> above freezing. But So this is all new, so pray for us. Pray for the warmth <laughs> of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, But, um, yes, Randy was sharing that, that he's been sharing... Um, in an interesting venue um, via Zoom, and then it's translated into another language, and it's broadcast on a radio station. In Grace Radio. Grace Radio. Um, 92.8, I think it is, or 6? 92.6. Sounds like my temperature sometimes. <laughs> and, um, and so it's really neat that the Lord is opening that door. Along with that, we've had over 2,000 views on last week's sermon, so good job, babe. They like your sermon. And um, so we're thankful for what God is doing. And yes, if you would like to give and contribute, we would be happy to um, receive that from you as a blessing because it goes towards furthering ministry and like Randy said, equipment and buying Bibles and, and ministering in these other countries at, at the capacity that the Lord is opening the door for. And so if you would like to contribute, you can do that on the PayPal app and that would be The Bridge, Pastor Randy and... Um, you can give what you want there, and it goes to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Amen. thank you for that in advance. Thank you for your prayers, because that's most important. And we do do a lot the of traveling. Important. We're going to be traveling again this next week, so pray for us. Um, we're going to be heading north where it's colder? <laughs> really? Why are we doing that? Oh, because our <laughs> kids live our up summer. there, right? Yeah, we have two boys that live up, the, up in the north. What happened there? Oh, well, anyway. So, um, but back to the spiritual stuff here. I'm going to read a passage of scripture that coordinates with, with the sermon for today. Um, and this is a crucial time in America. I know other countries are listening and watching and they're wanting to know what's happening in America as well. Mm -hmm. And America needs prayers. America needs your prayer. And we need to be diligent about our prayer and fasting right now. Our election is coming up in just a couple weeks and and it's a critical time for America. So we need to pray for peace and unity. We need to pray for truth to mm -hmm. abound, lies to be abased, and um, for, for the gospel of Jesus Christ to be mm -hmm. furthered. And that happens in various ways. One of the ways is this way, the bridge. So I'm going to read a passage of scripture, like I said, that coordinates with that. 
um, Randy's sermon is called Americans Commanded Not to Sing, Not to Meet in America? Really? Ooh, okay. So let's look at Acts chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. The priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people. Imagine that. Proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. Mm -hmm. So the number of men who believed <clears throat> grew to about 5,000. That was men. And we, we all know that women, never mind, I won't go there. But so praise God for the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. Thanks, Nancy, for sharing. God bless you. Let's pray together before we turn to the word. We are going to be in Acts chapter 4. Nancy just read verses 1 through 4. We're going to uh, pick up uh, at verse 8 and go through verse 22. So if you want to grab your Bible, that would be awesome. And we would love to have you uh, be a part of this uh, next few minutes as I share an important message that not only myself, but literally many hundreds of pastors across America are getting the same message, which comes from God's Word. And it's verified through scripture anointed by the Holy Spirit and he's going to help us uh, to seize our country and uh, keep it going in the right direction and here's the grounds on which we make those awesome decisions so in a spiritual sense as you can see my hands let's join hands together and let's pray and believe God for supernatural miracles Lord I pray for my friend that's watching right now meet his or her needs. You know what those needs are and you promised us in your word where two or three would gather. And Nancy and I, along with our friend, we're praying for healing, direction, peace, encouragement, love, understanding. Just pour out your Holy Spirit on my friend right now. Bless them, O oh God. Strengthen them, Lord Jesus, right now. Friend, just receive from the Lord. Stop whatever you're doing for a moment and silence your life and just hone in on prayer and on the Word with me just for a few minutes. It'll make a difference in the rest of your week. It won't take away time. It'll actually add time to your life. We were able to attend a great church service the last couple of Sundays. and It's been wonderful worshiping with thousands of people at James River and uh, south of Springfield. And it's just uh, refreshing to see the hand of God working. Father, minister right now to America. Help us to right the wrongs that we've made in the past. Forgive us of the babies that have been torn from the womb and heal us, Lord. I pray for Amy Barrett that she would be elected to and voted into the United States Supreme Court, the first very godly woman that's ever been seated on that high court in the land. Thank you for the 300 new constitutionalist judges that are taking their places in all of our cities and straightening out all of this sin and wrong and uh, terrible things that have been happening the last few decades. Forgive the Republicans and re forgive the Democrats and the independence of our sins and bring us back into unity together. I do ask, Lord, that you would just come against the virus that's still hurting people. It's very minuscule, but it still needs to stop and help us to understand what it is and know how to deal with it. I pray for the victims that have been sick or are recovering, for those that have lost loved ones. We pray for the children 
help the schools to open up because children can handle it and it's very very easily overcome like any flu or cold I pray for marriages right now I pray for healing I pray for teenagers that are struggling come out of your bedroom and if you're crying turn to your parents call your youth pastor call godly people into your life go to your children's pastor and get yourself in a place to receive from the Lord children need Jesus most of us make decisions for the Lord even in our tender years of 8, 9, 10, 11 years of age. Oh God, minister now in America. Bring us to the place that you want us to be. Let us to move forward in our walk with you. Bless the word to our hearts now and turn us towards you, Lord. We're seeking your face. Come and heal our land. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for praying with me. And if you'd like further prayer or ministry or questions, uh, my email is pastorrandy76 at gmail.com. Uh, you can reach us as well on WhatsApp. And you can follow us on Facebook, Randy Jones. And this message and other messages, we also have a YouTube channel. And uh, soon we are going to have our own webpage. It's being developed even as we speak, and I want to thank the Tinnies for providing that for us. Well, turn to the Word, if you would, now, and let's uh, discuss it together. Let us allow the Lord to guide us and bless us. Look at verse 8 of the fourth chapter of the book of Acts. Turn there with me, if you would. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, we are being called into account today for an act of kindness which is shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed. Then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. A wonderful miracle has just happened through the ministry of Peter and John. And I hope that you see that one of the ingredients that allows Peter to move from a man of faith, but also failure, to now a man who operates under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In fact, he's just preached a sermon and 3,000 people got saved. And out of that, now a miracle has happened to a man that everybody in the whole city knew as he sat there at the gate, and he's now healed. So as the man is presenting his miracle to the people, it's being stated here that it is by the name of Jesus that the miracle has occurred. I just prayed for you in the name of Jesus. You should pray in the name of Jesus. And when you do, that releases God's presence. That releases God's power. That does something supernatural that moves the hand of God in heaven that frees the Holy Spirit to go out and accomplish God's will in your situation and in my life. Uh, look now, if you would, at verse 11. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So to unpack and to delve into the truth of this passage of Scripture, the stone that is rejected is, of course, Jesus. And he told Peter, upon you I will build my church. He used the word Petra, which is rock, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That wonderful scripture is on the cornerstone of Val Vista Assembly of God. And it is that place where scripture is placed there. And we know that the gates of hell will not prevail. And that as we build our lives on Jesus, he's the chief cornerstone and everything else lines up with him. 
He's the only one who was fully God, fully man, simultaneously. And because of his perfection, the perfect cornerstone, our imperfection is then replaced by the perfection that comes through Jesus Christ. He is now the cornerstone that's perfect. My grandfather could frame a roof and we would then raise the roof to put it on the walls of a house or a building and it would fit perfectly. He was a master carpenter. Uh, Henry Pirelli is a master carpenter. When we built the fellowship hall, they put the walls up. And then when the trusses came that were already built, they fit perfectly on the roof. It's awesome. And uh, there are those that have those gifts and talents. Well, Jesus had the gift of perfection where Adam failed. And he now is the one that can provide for us what is needed for us to be able to take our imperfections. And we have many glaring imperfections. I do, you do. But Jesus then compensates for that and brings in forgiveness, love, understanding. It's like this. It's both vertical and horizontal. Instead of making life more complex like we're doing today, Jesus took the Ten Commandments and said, love God and then love each other. So if you love God, you love each other, all the rest of the Ten Commandments and even the rest of life makes sense. So as we look here at the passage, our imperfections then have been made perfect. So where we sin, the Bible says, for all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. We know that to be true. And now, as we look at this, salvation is found only in Jesus. Muhammad cannot bring salvation to you. He could bring some good thoughts. Uh, you could follow other historical figures. You could follow other theological uh, frameworks. But the only framework that really gives us access to our Heavenly Father comes through Jesus Christ. It's the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus came out of the water and being water baptized, it wasn't because he sinned, but he set a pattern of submission. So there you have Jesus. Then you have the Holy Spirit ascend upon him as in the form of a dove to empower him for the ministry and the battle that he was facing with the enemy, Satan. And then, of course, God speaks from heaven and says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So he's establishing truth. He's establishing the family. Now, in verse 13, it says, When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Courage is needed right now. California's made some really poor decisions. They say you can't sing in church because you're going to pass the germ around. Uh, they're saying that as of last Friday, that churches can no longer meet inside the buildings. Now, Let's talk about this passage and then let's apply it to our situation that we're living in right now. Christians don't want to be rebellious. We want to be able to do the right thing based upon what? What are the values? And in America, if you don't like a law, you don't just break it, you change the law. Well, it's time for Californians to change the laws and the structure of the laws that's causing people to exit the state by the millions. And I just want to bring to you that the New Testament church was dealing with the very same thing that you're dealing with in your church, in your churches. And I hope the rest of the nation doesn't follow suit with trying to take away our choice. What makes America great is our choice. In fact, even in our legal system, we would rather, you know, 
many go free rather than convict one innocent person. And so choice is why 20 million people have applied to come into America uh, and they're waiting to come in legally and we take in 1.1, 1.2 million every year legally. And it's wonderful, we want them, we welcome them. But we also need to realize that why are they wanting to come? Because we have freedom of choice. If you wanna be involved in the stock market, if you wanna own land, if you wanna have a family, if you wanna worship a certain way, a style, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can choose Southern Gospel, you can choose Contemporary, you can choose, choose opera, opera, you can go to a cowboy church. It's your choice how you want to worship. But it's within the framework of truth, which is how we communicate one with another. So as we look at this, courage is needed. These men are unschooled. And yet we need to think, and here's what Jesus did. Now listen very carefully. Jesus didn't teach what to think. He taught how to think. He gave us parables, principles, by which we make good, godly, right decisions. And that's where we've gotten messed up. Back in the 60s, they took prayer out of school, Bible out of schools, uh, liberalism and craziness and all kinds of socialism has taken a root and it's now harvesting in parts of our culture. It's being rooted out though and being tossed out. And the good people who carry a Bible, who carry weapons to protect themselves and their families and should, people that have freedom of speech to speak truth that's what we have in America, and we need to protect that, and it's under attack. Even the Supreme Court justices have referred to that recently, that there is an attack upon freedom. So I want to encourage you, when you vote, and when you support people who run for your city council, your school councils, your, your uh, governors, the, the nation, the national, all of them should have a framework by which they make decisions about what is right and wrong. We have that framework from God's holy word. Jesus taught us how to walk in forgiveness. He taught us how to spot a phony and reject those who are not thinking clearly. In fact, he taught us that there is a time when you're not accepted or the truth that you are bringing forth from God's word is being ridiculed, that you're to, sh to shake the dust off your feet and keep going. Don't get bogged down with a lot of foolishness. Walk with the Lord. Now, this miracle has taken place. Look at verse 14. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. So freedom of speech is under attack here even in the first century church. What are we going to do with these men, they asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that they have performed a notable sign and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in his name. So speech is being restricted here. It's obvious that God's hand of blessing is upon America. Look at the stock market. In fact, you watch. Next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of America. More millionaires and more Wealth will be used to propagate the gospel than any time in modern history. Everyone knows the truth, and the truth is setting people free. Many of those that are on the crazy liberal side are beginning to awaken. Even my own grown children, for the first time, is seeing prosperity that they never saw back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, even 2000s, but now here it's returning and they're liking what they see. So notice that the miracles have occurred. Everyone knows the truth 
And they're being warned here not to speak in the name of Jesus. If you tell a lie long enough, some people will believe it. Look at verse 18. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or to teach at all in the name of Jesus. Just like when we took the Bible out of schools in the 60s. It's back now. I don't know how free it is in every school district. Prayer. They still don't have prayers at graduations. And we wonder why the suicide rate is increasing. We wonder why kids are strung out on drugs. Where's the Ten Commandments and the values that create community that have helped the world for thousands of years? It's been eliminated. Bring it back. Bring prayer back. Bring reading of the scripture back to the graduations in 2021 and watch what God will do. Watch the hand of God bless the schools again and the communities come together again. You can't kick us out and then expect us to be quiet. It's pushback time. And you're not going to get pushed back just a little, Satan and liberals. You're going to get pushed back completely. The war is on. The battle's on. You've called the battle. Now we're going to love you, but we're going to press forward. We're going to do, look at verse 21. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years of old. old. So miracles are happening. I'm pray, I pray for you already. Expect a miracle. Receive your miracle. If you're in a financial strait, ask God to help you. If you need your body to be healed, we've prayed. Stand in your healing. Watch God. And notice that there's confusion on how to punish the people. I believe that'll happen as churches make right decisions. If Walmart can figure out how to, how to keep the doors open through this uh, convoy time, this uh, time of viruses, COVID, the church has figured it out. I went to a church where thousands of us were gathered and there was social distancing. It was wonderful. And it, what an encouragement. I needed that. Nancy and I needed that to lift up holy hands and to praise the Lord and to hear a great word from a, from a godly woman that it had a women's conference at James River and it blessed our souls and was a word that was very timely. I hope that you realize that this is a moment for the church not to go into the basement and hide somewhere. This is the time for the church to be on the forefront leading and doing the right thing. So there's confusion about how to handle it. There is confusion about how to handle it. But what happened to the separation of church and state? Now, if you're sick or afraid and you want to hide at home, do so. But please don't tell us we can't sing and that we can't worship. That's wrong. To take my choice away. What brought about abortion that was the deciding factor was a woman's right to choose. Well, that can be debated. But if women want to do that in America, you're going to probably be able to always do that. But don't use my tax dollar and don't expect us who believe in life to support that. That's your decision. If you want to kill your, your, uh, your line of, of people in your family, if you want to do that, go for it. But not us. We believe in God's blessing, his provision, his help. So in closing, look at verse 21. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years of age. God wants to do mighty miracles. And I believe that there's great miracles coming. The application here is the church is God's idea. Let's not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as some are in the habit of doing is what Hebrews says. We need to come together. I know we can do it online, but online is second best to being together in person. We need to social distance and protect ourselves, but don't stop meeting together. This is a frontal attack on the church, the ecclesia, the gathering of God's people. The community is God's plan. That's the reason for the Ten Commandments. Moses went up on the mountain. He got the Ten Commandments. And that's how communities stay glued together. When you start committing adultery with one another, it tears the community apart. When you start stealing, when you degrade moms and dads like some rock music and some uh, uh, rap music that destroys the police or destroys the family, destroys the church, 
that'll cause confusion. That'll cause the whole meltdown of the community. That's why there's so much trouble in the inner cities. I love those groups that are going into the inner city and are having worship rallies out in the street. See, that'll bring God's power back. I love the fact that Nancy and I, along with millions, are asking for forgiveness. God, forgive us. Not just for the things we've done, but how about the things we didn't do? How about supporting our church? How about ministering in a special way? And finally, the family is God's plan. God said to Jesus, today you will become my son. That's how authority was established. Some of the mistakes I've made in life was not listening to my pastor, to my dad, to godly men. I remember Brother Kleinschmidt when he prayed for the opening service at Val Vista Assembly of God back in 1986. And when he prayed, you could tell he knew God. I love to hear people that have known God for a long time and they say, Heavenly Father. You know they have that relationship. I hope that you have that relationship. Nancy and I are praying for you. We want God to change your life. Let's pray together now as we close our broadcast together. Father, come now with your peace and power. Strengthen us, O oh God. Forgive us of our sins and allowing abortion to go unchecked. Forgive us for letting adultery occur unchecked, even in our churches, Lord. Help us to get people married, to have babies inside of the wedlock. Forgive us of allowing alcoholism and drugs to go unchecked. Thank you for Teen Challenge and Outreach Ministries and Overcomers and Friday nights in churches that are working with people that have struggle with addictions. Thank you that the altars are full of people turning back to you. May this next generation really know you as Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Guide this election and may there not be unrest. And if there is unrest, let righteousness win. Let godliness win. Bring our metros and our suburb areas and our countrysides turn towards you. Take away hypocrisy and bring in everlasting life. Hallelujah. Pray with me, friend. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring peace to America. Help America once again to be that voice to the world that Jesus still saves heals and delivers. Hallelujah. Minister now. Pray the prayer of invitation. Let Christ into your heart. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life that I might live with you forever. In Jesus' resurrected name I pray. Amen. We believe that if you prayed that prayer, you're saved Contact us if you need a Bible. Help us take this good news, uncompromising truth around the globe for Jesus Christ. Would you pray for us as I teach in other nations via video and via the internet? I would invite you and the thousands that are watching here in America as well. God is using so many of us to reach the world. And boy, seeing Israel being so blessed and all the borders opening up and peace is coming to the Middle East. This is that time that Scripture talks about. It's a great time. It's not a time to have fear. It's a time to have faith. Join with us and let's rise above the muck and the mud and let's rise with eagle wings with Jesus. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Let's soar with the Lord. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. See you next time.